Hello everybody, this is John Thompson. Uh, tonight I'm going to be talking to you about uh, my second Forest German project. This is actually going to be different from the first one uh, that I built. The first one I built was a model made by Atlantis Ravel. It's the same manufacturer for the second one. The only differences in the second project are in photo etch detailing that I added. Uh, it made a huge difference. Uh, one of the main things I did to the model was to remove the railings and uh, that took a little bit of time to do. I found myself a set of Tom's 1 3 50th scale railings which were about the right size. Uh, they were a little oversized and actually did the job nicely. Uh, one of the other things that I wanted to point out too in this kit uh, that I liked about the second go around was adding that photo etch. It changed the appearance of the model and made the model look a lot better than it had previously uh, if I would have built it stock. So uh, that's one of the things that um, make this kit unique. Uh, there are pin marks and injection marks on it. There is a bit of flash, but certain elements that uh, I liked replacing in the models themselves uh, would be, you know, the radar and the railings and once you do that it really does make the kit look a lot better uh, also I used uh, Tamaya and testers paints to paint the hull uh, I used a dark gold gray paint from testers it was acrylic as well as uh, Tamaya neutral gray for the for the other color and in addition to which I thought the two would contrast each other very well I used a medium blue to paint the deck. Uh, the bottom of the ship was painted with uh, Model Flex Tuscan Red as well as a weathered black. These are again acrylic based paints. They actually gave a pretty good finish, uh, albeit a little glossier compared to the Tamaya paints. Uh, so I want to be very careful when I do dull coating. I had a bad reaction with the dull coat when I put it on uh, Monoflex paint it tended to craze uh, and I got this frosty kind of snow snow effect uh, I don't know if it was humidity or maybe it might have been just with the paint itself so that was an issue I had in the kit so I tried to avoid dull coating this as much as possible I did use the stock kit decals uh, the decals themselves are um, the originals that came with the kit and again, uh, they give you the options for three ships. You have Forrest Sherman, you have the Edson, or the USS Turner Joy. I went with uh, the Forrest Sherman, uh, the first in the class, based on this model. I did also follow some prototype pictures and made some alterations. Uh, the radars, again, I said I replaced with photo etch uh, parts. I had some uh, an SPS-40 radar kicking around as well as one up in the upper works uh, that looked similar to the pictures. The pictures were actually very useful. I did notice, uh, I don't know which outfitting it was, which frame fitting uh, it was, but on the uh, first gun turret uh, forward, there was, or gun mounting I should say, forward there was uh, an antenna, a ship to shore antenna, so I had some leftover photo etch from the USS New Jersey. It was an Edward photo etch set. So I took that item out of the set and put uh, that through some uh, nice brass wire that I had. It happened to be the exact diameter of the holes uh, in the center of that antenna, so it seemed to work out. Uh, like I said, this kit is the kind of kit you can put as much time, effort uh, in it as you want. It's a basic Ravel model, but the detail on it is actually fairly decent. Uh, you have doors that are open and you also have some of the other stuff along the side of the ship. I wish there was more of a thorough painting detail to identify some of these items. Uh, Ravel's directions and Atlantis's directions, which are exact copies of the Ravel directions, are kind of sketchy at best. There was one other thing I want to point out. Uh, there was an extra part left over in the kit. I didn't know which what it, what it was exactly. It was number 39, but according to the kit directions, 39 is also the forward funnel, so I had to figure out where this part went. Now, the box photographs show a finished 
model with this particular piece over where the compass platform is. So I had built that when I built the Edson and I did follow the pictures on the box. This one I actually followed the directions and I added the photo edge railings. So uh, I kind of had to use a little bit of creative license on this. So I'm hoping it turned out it turns out decently in the camera. I'm going to show you a few uh, a few uh, images here, and I also have some photographs too, which I'm going to include later on in the video for you to watch. This is the final project. Uh, let's see. Hopefully, we can get a good light on it. Uh, this light actually doesn't really do justice, but in good lighting. Uh, you could see that basically the photo etch actually has improved the model's appearance drastically. It really finishes it off. It gets rid of that cheesy appearance of the molded on railings that Ravel typically does. Uh, here you can see I painted the deck. I did do some basic detailing on it. Uh, I painted the life rafts white as well as trying to uh, more or less follow the practices that I sort of took on the other one, make it a little bit different. Uh, the mast top here, uh, I changed a little bit. I added a little bit of height on this last segment here. Uh, I rigged it identically. Uh, I also want to point out to the whip antennas. I made my own from brass wire, uh, cut it to the exact length of the other whip antennas. Uh, the whip antennas that came with this kit I did not use on this particular model. But I used them on the uh, Ravel Edson model that I built, and you'll notice that they're a little more clunky. And so on this one, I kind of wanted something different uh, to kind of show some changes I've made to the kit. I could have gone even further, removed that uh, gun in the middle section, the double the double gun mounting, and replaced that with a superstructure element uh, to be more consistent with the later frame mount fitting but I would have also had to remove the torpedo tubes. Uh, these uh, ships were very unique in that uh, later outfittings had the torpedo tubes removed. Uh, I would recommend this kit again, uh, even as a second try for myself. I still had the same fit areas. Uh, the tripods on the masts were a little bit tough to do. I also encountered issues with uh, with putting together some some of the superstructure features so I had to do that and because I removed the molded on railings I encountered a lot of gapping which basically I had to fill in and the photo wedge did cover a lot of it but I had to be very careful too because when I stripped the molded on rails I took out the mooring bits which I had to re eventually replace with uh, paper and toothpicks paint at the deck color so that was pretty much some ways around some things. So it turned out to be different uh, than what the stock out of the box version was. Was it worth it? Yes. Uh, it was a good experience overall. And uh, again, I recommend this kit. It Ravel kits are actually underrated for some of their quality. Yes, there is crudity and detailing and some of the stuff, but. There are good companies like Shapeways if you want to really get into redoing them. They make 3D superstructures, they make deck fittings, they make deck guns uh, for the various scales. Now, one of the reasons why it's so tough to find parts for uh, these type of models is Ravel used what was called box scale. They made the model whatever size it needed to be to fit in the box. So that's essentially what it was. So you get really uncommon scales like 1,426. This particular kit was 1,320th scale. So it required me kind of scrounging around and finding the closest I could to the photo wedge size. Didn't mean that I could use absolutely everything, but Tom's thankfully made the railings slightly oversized, which were actually perfect in scale. So it actually kind of helped me in the building process. Uh, I also had some spare radars left over from another photo etch set, which happened to be, ironically, the right scale for, uh, for the masts. Uh, other than that, this was, like I said, a challenge. And if you plan accordingly with this, uh, you can actually still make a decent model, despite some of those pin marks, which can be very tough to remove. 
uh, you're going to discover this kit has a lot of flash in it. So you're going to be spending a lot of time with the hobby knife cutting. Uh, this is an old mold. Uh, basically this original kit came out in 1957. Ravel released it for a while and then of course Atlantis bought the molds and all that to reissue the kit. Uh, apart from that, that's basically it. The decals were actually very good and uh, I like to keep spare sets of decals. I kept the other sets in case I needed them and if you wanted to as well if you have more than one set of those decals what you can do is you can make numbers of ships that are not included in uh, the modeling options like the USS Barry or uh, you could even go uh, and make some other ones that were in the class so I recommend looking into that as well uh, and that's basically it have a good evening